Shock Suspense Stories. The Sacrifice, a Crime Suspense Story. I have just written, signed, and mailed to the police a carefully worded statement confessing to the murder of Jonathan Fielding, completely absolving his widow, Gloria Fielding, of any complicity in the horrendous deed and clearing her name of all guilt. I have done this out of the deep love and compassion I have for this woman. I cannot bear to see her suffer another night of degradation and humility such as she is now enduring at this very moment. In an hour or so, Gloria will be coming in the door, red-eyed and sobbing, and it will be the last time for her. Now, I stand before the huge French doors leading out onto her penthouse balcony. In the east, the night sky is just beginning to retreat from the advancing dawn. I lift the vial of poison to my lips, and I drink it down. For you, my darling, there is a burning within me, a liquid fire carried it with it the touch of death. In a few minutes, I will feel that touch, and I will die, and Gloria will be finally, will finally be free. I turn and walk slowly to a chair, sinking down into its luxurious softness. The music from the phonograph drips across the penthouse living room. Music. Sweet music. Like the glorious music I heard in my heart the day I first met her. Gloria. The woman I love. Jonathan. I, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you had company. Come in, Gloria. I want you to meet James Reed. Mr. Reed, my wife, Gloria. A pleasure, Mrs. Fielding. Gloria Fielding was the most beautiful woman I had ever seen. I think I fell in love with her that moment I met her, and she knew it. Something down deep inside her seemed to stir, too. Mr. Reed is an insurance salesman, my dear. He's trying to interest me in a policy. Mr. Reed looks capable of interesting people in, in insurance policies, Jonathan. You flatter me, Mrs. Fielding. The attraction between Gloria and me was like a snowball rolling downhill, gathering momentum and size as its speed increased. Well, thank you, Mr. Reed. Leave me a card and I'll call you. Yes, Mr. Reed, do that. Of course. Here you are. I'll never forget the look that Gloria gave me as she saw me to the door of her spacious showplace home. It was a look of hunger and loneliness and desperation and a thousand yet unsaid words. Well, good night, Mrs. Fielding. I, I, I trust I'll, I'll be hearing from you. I'm sure of it, Mr. Reed. I think your uh, policy is just what is needed. That's all there was to it. A glance, a smile, a few innocent phrases, and suddenly the infernos in our hearts were roaring with the flames of desire. I wasn't surprised at all when she called the next day. Mrs. Fielding, how nice of you. I got to see you. Can you get away for an hour? It's important, but my husband won't be here. I shall never forget that the first secret meeting, the uncomfortable forced conversation scaling the wall of mutual embarrassment that stood between us, the silence while our hungry thoughts whirled within us trying to seek expression, and then the sudden surge of passion, the breakthrough. Darling, darling, from the very first moment I saw you, don't speak, just, just hold me, K kiss me. Ours was a love that had sprung suddenly, an explosion of emotion, a passionate sweeping of body and morals. We met, we loved, it was simple in its violence and it was impossible. He would never give me up, he'd hold on to me forever, but you could have me and his, his fortune. Gloria, I, uh, uh huh, you, you, you mean? It was a blinding love, it had no room for sober thinking, it was a crashing symphony and I played blindly along. It would be so simple, darling. The balcony out there. One push and... But, but that's murder, dearest. I, I... 
Yes, I played along. The tune was desire. The thing was passion. The instrument was death. My wife finally convinced me to take out that policy, Mr. Reed. Now, about the premium. Gentlemen, don't you think it would be much cooler on the balcony? The piece had been well rehearsed. We knew every note, every bar, every measure. The stage was set. The mad music was about to begin. Yes, well, as I was saying, Reed, I'd prefer the premiums to be lumped into one yearly sum, so... Jonathan, come, come quickly, look! My heart was a thumping kettle drop. Gloria's voice was a clashing cymbal. Jonathan hurried to the edge of the parapet and gazed down into the city canyon below, down to where Gloria pointed. What is it, dear? What do you see? No, darling! No! Ah! The melody, Jonathan's shriek faded away, faded down into the canyon down 18 floors to a death finale. The concert was over, Jonathan lived no more, Gloria was free, and she was mine. Oh, she James, fell into my arms. Scream. It, it, was, it was awful, awful. It's all over now, Gloria. Come on, let's go down. The ambulance siren was an encore that sung into the canyon. The intern looked at Jonathan's broken and twisted body and shook his head. Get out there, May. You need a boy wagon. <laughs> the police came and questioned us. I, I'm just an insurance salesman. I came up here to sell Mr. Fielding a policy. We're out in the balcony. He, he, he slipped. <laughs> it, it was an accident. A horrible, horrible accident. The police had no reason to believe otherwise. There was no motive. Gloria and Jonathan had been happily married. I was a stranger. There was no evidence of foul play. And my parting shot fixed things good. I'm sorry, Mrs. Fielding. Your husband didn't sign the papers. He, he, he wasn't even covered. Get out of here, Reed. Can't you see she's upset enough about this? It was over. Done with. The police made their report. The coroner's jury deliberated. And the report was delivered. Accidental death, this case is closed. And then it happened. We were in the penthouse that night celebrating. The phone rang. Let it ring, baby. I, I better answer it, dear. It may be important. I watched Gloria cross the room to the phone. Beautiful, desirable Gloria. A woman a man would murder for. I watched her lift the receiver. Watch the soft, kissable lips mouth the words. Watch the face grow pale. Oh no! Oh God, no! Oh, what is it, Gloria? She hung up, shaking. She turned to me, fear written in white on her lovely face. It, it, it was a man, Jimmy. He wants to come see us. He, he's coming up. He said it's about my husband's murder. Murder? Good Lord! Our passion concerto had had an audience. He arrived a few minutes later, tall, dark, suave looking. He stood in the center of the living room, grinning. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Paul Nichols. I live out there on the 20th floor of their building opposite this one. His mouth was a grim like hard and cruel. His eyes were glued on Gloria as he spoke, traveling over her, absorbing. I have often watched Mrs. Fielding from my window, watched her with a great deal of admiration. I happened to be looking the night Mr. Fielding, or shall we say, died. He went on. I saw it all, everything. I saw you lure him to the end. I saw you push him. I know it's murder. I saw it all. Why you? He held up his hands. Don't try anything. It wouldn't be why. I have written down what I know, and my sealed statement is now in the hands of my lawyer to be open in the event of my untimely death. Then, then, then it's bl this is blackmail. Call it what you will. If my attraction to Mrs. Fielding has not been so compelling, I might have never have been, but I have, and I am ready to do business. How, mu how, how much do you want? <laughs> he laughed. His eyes never left Gloria. I am a rich man, Mr. Reed. I don't want money. Then, then what do you want? I want Mrs. Fielding. <laughs> what? Never. He grinned evilly, lecturously. 
Let's give this matter some serious thought, Mr. Reed. Mrs. Fielding, let's not act hastily. You're out of your mind. If the police were to find out what I know, both you and Mrs. Fielding would die in the electric chair. You wouldn't want Mrs. Fielding to die, would you, Mr. Reed? You love her too much for that. And you, Mrs. Fielding, do you want your lover too? I'll kill you, Nichols! So help me! Wait, Jimmy! Wait! Go I looked at me with terror-filled eyes. I love you, Jimmy. I don't want you to die. I'd do anything to prevent it. I love you. Not that. I couldn't expect you to agree to that. Paul Nichols sneered. Then I tell you what I know. Is that your decision? No, wait. Listen to me, darling. It'll only be for a little while. He'll grow tired of me. We'll still have to our whole lives together. Well, I, sweet, I, I, I won't let you. I couldn't help it. I cried like a baby. Gloria, my Gloria. She was willing to degrade herself to save me. Give herself to this fiend. All right, Mr. Nichols. What are your terms? During the day, I am at the office. Your time is your own. I am home at 8. I expect you to be there every night. No, Wait. oh God, no. Gloria, hold me as a mother holds a hurt son, protecting, soothing, running her soft hands over my face, my hair, hushing me, listening to his terms. Go on, Mr. Nichols. There is nothing to go on about. Tomorrow, you will marry me. And now, since we're engaged, you might as well know my first name. It is Paul. Oh, I told him. I told him what his name was. Every vile word I ever knew. Every name I ever learned. I called him. He smiled and left. Gloria sighed. <sighs> Let me kill him, Gloria. Let me. The statement, dearest. Remember the statement he has? I remember that next night, I thought it would never end. The waiting, the interminable waiting. I paced the penthouse floor, smoked cigarette after cigarette, cursed him, and cried for Gloria. <gasps> and towards dawn, with sleepless eyes, I beheld my loved one as she came in. Gloria, baby! Oh, Jimmy! Jimmy, I feel so, so, so filthy! She cried in my arms. She shook as though she were cold, even though the night was stifling. And I tried to comfort her. Don't go back, Gloria. Let's run away. Let's... He'll tell. <laughs> tell the boys. They'll find us. No, I must go on with this. Can you understand the horror I've gone through? Can you understand the pain? Seeing Gloria return each night, degraded, hating herself, and yet loving me enough to go back again the next night. How? How, how was it tonight, darling? Don't, Jimmy. Don't ask me. <laughs> It was an ordeal for her, an ordeal that sapped her both physically and mentally. I, I'm so, so tired today, Jimmy, please. I'm sorry, honey. And in the months that followed, I watched Gloria grow hard and numb and cold to my affection. And each night, I waited for her. And each morning, she returned, red-eyed, broken, pleading. I, I, I can't go on, Jimmy. I I can't, he's, he's killing everything, everything, even my need for you. No, oh Gloria, Gloria. This morning when she looked at me and cried. Oh, save me darling, save I knew what I had to do. So I confessed to the crime. I wrote it all down. I had to do it this way. I was afraid to go to the police. I didn't think I could keep Gloria's name out of it at the trial. Writing it was easier. To whom it may concern, I, James Reed, do hereby confess to the murder of Jonathan Fielding. I did this murder alone, unaided, unabetted, and with the premeditation. No one had any plot. I cleared Gloria completely. I saved them a good reason. I told him he insulted me and that when Mrs. Fielding had gone into the living room for six I hurl them off the balcony, and in remorse for this, I have returned to the scene of my crime and will commit suicide by taking a deadly poison. Goodbye, Jane A. Reed. And now, I am lying here, watching the dawn come up in the east, and knowing that at last, Gloria will be free. The poison within me burns, and my mouth is dry, and there is a darkening. Jimmy, I'm home!
Gregoria? I cannot move. My body's numb. I call her name. Gloria. Timmy, Timmy, what have you done? She rushes to me, sobbing. Jenny! I took poison, confessed murder. Y you're, you're free. It's funny. A little while ago, the apartment was getting light. The rising sun was streaming through the windows. Now, it is getting dark once more. I'm dying. I know it. There's not much time. Poison? Confession? Save you. Mailed confession to the police. He has no hold on you now. It's strange to die. I see to hear laughter. Girlish laughter. Glorious <laughs> girlish laughter. Well, it's about time. <laughs> you can divorce him. And now I see to hear her voice snarling it's at about me. Time, sucker. <laughs> I was beginning to think I sized you up wrong. Huh? All is darkness now. The last thing I hear is a phone dial clicking. And Gloria's. Paul, darling. He's finally done it. <laughs> He's taken poison and mailed a confession to the police. That's all but me. <laughs> yes, dear. I told you it would work. I told you I could find some sucker to murder Jonathan for us. You can pack your things and move out of town now. Here, with me. The end.